It's going to be the death of me, these fags. (laughs) (laughs) We aren't such a William and Mikey. (laughs) Hello and welcome to Help I Sexted My Boss, the podcast where we help you navigate the challenges of modern life answering your 21st century questions and finding solutions to those everyday dilemmas. Like, what should I do if my Airbnb has a squatter? Oh, I've got an update on that. Oh, do you? Yeah, we'll do that next. And how do I poli- p- politely reject a shot of tequila? Oof. Oh, no, you shouldn't shot tequila. I've done this on my um, it's, on my videos. It's meant to be sipped, isn't it? It is. I That's can't drink tequila. The Mexican etiquette. I had a baked bean tequila shot in Liverpool once as a tequila bar and it I spewed all over me, mate. Oh. Well, no wonder. And what should you do if you've accidentally sexted your boss? But we're not usual like the answer. Are we, William Hansen, the UK's leading etiquette expert? No, we're not, Jordan North. I'm more Orient Express. You are more Tesco Express. That's from Emily Clark. Quite like that. That's very good, actually. Yeah. That's really good. Should we, uh, should we have a drink? Yeah, just before I forget, the update. Um, so I ended up revealing that I used to be an Airbnb host yeah. in my flat in Preston. And um, where is it now? Someone, uh, Mark, messaged me on Instagram and he said, Hi, my girlfriend listens to your podcast and linked me to your story about the homeless guy who shit in the stairway of your Airbnb place. I mean, mm. it wasn't my Airbnb place, it was my flat. <laughs> I used to live in Woodrow House, just off New Orleans in Preston, and someone said you were there at the same time. Anyway, I lived on the top floor and one work morning I left for work at 5am. Went to walk down the stairs and found a homeless guy with shit smeared all over the walls, <gasps> stairs and carpet. So I decided to get the lift down instead. I've wondered since how he got in, but maybe the mystery has been solved. So cheers for that. <laughs> oh, that sounds passive aggressive. Because I used to let him in, but it, I think he's being dramatic. It wasn't smeared everywhere. I think it just... Well, you described a fairly fecal scene. It was very, fairly fecal. <laughs> so yeah, Mark and everybody else that used to live in Woodrow House in Preston, it was me that used to let him in. Right. And are, I, are you sorry? No. Sorry I'm, for the fecal matter? I'm sorry for the shit, but I'm not sorry for being a nice human No, 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 no. I'm not saying you should apologise for that. But yeah. Okay. It, yeah. Thanks for the update. Okay, sorry to start the episode with that. I just thought... Well, There's your G&D. Thank you. Who should we toast? I think... Hmm. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> Who should we toast to? Oh, oh let me think. What's Who's, gone on? What what's events gone on? over the weekend? I would like been? to toast a very happy birthday. So William Hansen. Oh, bless you. Ooh, Thank happy you. Happy birthday. Oh, I don't drink to myself. How many times have <laughs> I said that? Oh, happy birthday, William. Thank you so much. How 62 old? at last. How old are you now? I'm 34. 34. I know. I don't look it, do I? You must have been one of the oldest in your year. I was. Yeah. Until, until one other person joined. Yeah. And then he was born on the 1st of September. I bet that and annoyed it, you. Didn't it really annoyed me. I bet. Mm. You'd love to have been born on the 1st of the month. It's very orderly, isn't it? Yes, exactly. Mm. Very neat. Now, uh, my Rick, best friend Rick, yes. he was the youngest in the oh yeah, He was born was on he? the 31st of August. Oh, mm. okay. So, so I wouldn't... So he's only yeah. just turned 33. Mm, Were you born in 89? Yes. Well, yeah. Yes, a Thatcher baby. Oh, yeah. Mm. I, know, I, I was, technically. Were you? 1990. She left in... Oh, I don't know when she left office. Could I believe she was quickly? still in office when I was born, February 1990. Okay, yeah, probably, I think. And Sinead O'Connor was number one. Yes, you've said that before. <laughs> what I was think number of... one when you were born? Oh, I don't know. Do you know by Max oh, Bygraves, come on, we've probably. got to look. Oh, come on. I don't know that. Right, uh, let me look now. God, he goes right back this. Times he said that. <laughs> Grow up. Okay. On the 2nd of September, 1989, the number one single was Jive Bunny, Swing the Mood. What? I don't even know that song. In the UK. And then, oh, the number one album was Gloria Estefan. Oh, thank you, God. <laughs> Cuts both ways. <laughs> It was meant to be! Well, I only go one way, but uh, I'm glad it's Gloria Estefan, as I believe it's pronounced. Um, that's nice. Swing that's the quite... mood, jive bunny. Oh, no. No way! This is a tune! You play this at, like, weddings and stuff. Not at night. Oh, I'm going to add this to my set list. Face melters. Oh, 
Was that in the UK? That's not very... Let me just check that. That's right? not very me. UK top 40. Oh, well, there we um, go. With it being your birthday... Yes. I've got you some gifts. Oh, bless you. You really shouldn't have. Um, now, first of all... Jordan's first... just put a, a black bag on the on the table. Not a bin bag, just the, a black branded The first bag. gift I want to give you. Now, famously, William Hansen doesn't drink out of mugs, do you? No. No, you never have, never will, will you? No. I think that's about to change. <laughs> Because I was shopping and I thought, I've finally found a mug that I think you will love and you'll drink out of. Okay. okay. So when you get up in the morning, you never have a mug of coffee, you have a cup, don't you? A teacup. No. Okay. Or a coffee cup. <laughs> There's a little mug there. You've left the price on. That's nice. <laughs> <laughs> it says, it's a 10 ounce mug and it says, big gay mug. Which take is, it, which take is it out nice. the wrapper and show it for the cameras. You can... And it was £12. <laughs> Have I left the tag on? <laughs> oh, God. Is but... it 12 quid? Yes. For a mug? Oh, it's gorgeous. Hold it out. Show it. <laughs> and then take a sip of it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I will... Tell you what, once, once I've given it a wash, I will send you a photo of me drinking something out of this. Okay. Big gay mug. Thank you. That's so sweet of you. I got your card, and then there's another little gift there as well. Oh, you can. Is it a comedy gift or? No, it's that's a nice one. Oh, oh H R H demoted me. H R H William Hansen rather mm. than H M. Um, can I open? I'm going to open at the time of recording. It hasn't actually been my birthday. Okay. I'm going to save the card for my actual birthday. Yeah. If that's all right. Okay. And should I save this for my actual you birthday? Can do or do if you want. It it's now? up to you. What do you think, Ben? Is it comedy or not? No, it's not really. It's right, I'll nice... save that for the actual okay. day. Because I go. we can't beat the mug. Right. There you go. Thank you. That's so sweet of you. I will actually to be fair, it's not mass what the thing I object to about mugs, as I think I've said on this before, is how thick the rim is. Say nothing. But it's like it's sort of like the sports direct mugs that people always I sort love, of try. Love no, when you're hung over. That is relatively delicate. It's not is as it? delicate as I've seen in some, but it's not too thick. Do you know what I'm going to do on Sunday? I've got a gig on Saturday at the time of recording. And I'm yeah. probably going to be hung over on Sunday. I'm going to get in. I'm going to put my dressing gown on with a hood up. I'm going to get my Sports Direct mug and just eat a load of biscuits. Big, <laughs> big, big mug of tea. Just dip a load of biscuits. Your gig on Saturday, because Saturday will be my actual birthday, mm. you're going to play the number one in the gig. Yeah, I Dedicate might do. it to me. Yeah. yeah. I'll say, right, everyone. It's DJ Jordy Jordy here. I'm going to play this for my best friend, William Hansen. And someone will just shout, who? <laughs> As always, if you need our help with something, then we would love it if you got in touch. You can send your tales of trepidation to help at sexofmyboss.com. Or you can get somebody to message me about this. Mm -hmm. Or you can X us. Yes, oh, I got messaged about that as well. well you, can tw you can tweet us or send us a message on Instagram, at Sex and My Boss. Or you can write to William Hansen, who in the fullness of time promises a handwritten reply on one of the luxury greeting cards with executive self seal envelopes. The address is on the website, sexandmyboss.com. Um, we should also say, uh, talking of our social media, thank you very much to everyone who follows us on TikTok, because, and I, people are very excited about this, um, we have now a million followers. That's amazing. That Which is, is incredible. incredible. Oh, we said oh. the same. <laughs> Jinx. <laughs> William Hanson, William Hanson, William Hanson, William Hanson, William Hanson. Thank you. Um, I th it, how, is it six times you have to say? No, it's five. Is it five? Okay. Five up north. Oh, is it? Yeah. Okay. Um, but yeah, we're, we're viral. Yes. You haven't been this viral since university. You've talked about your chlamydia pants. I didn't. No, I have. I've had, I've had, I've had chlamydia pants. As in, right. you used to have to do a test at uni. Okay. You used to get free tests and... Like and you'd go into you... a nightclub and they'd be like, if you do a chlamydia to you, we're rife in Sunderland. <laughs> I've talked about it. So to get free entry into a nightclub, mm. you'd do a chlamydia test. Okay. And you'd get free boxes and those Kanye West sunglasses. Do you remember them? With the lines. <laughs> right. Anyway. Um, okay. But yeah, we've got a million followers on TikTok, which when we started this podcast, we never would have well, thought. Well, we had none because TikTok didn't exist. No. Yes. Or if it did exist, no one knew about it. Probably didn't, actually. 2018. 2019. Mm, yeah, I don't know when it started. Anyway, thank you to all of all of those. Um, I'd also like to apologise to my upstairs neighbour, Izzy. Okay. She who is married to the artist formerly known as Cam Show Dom. He's not known as Cam Show Dom now. He's an he's artist? No, no, it's, you know, the artist formerly known as. It's just like uh, a term of, term yeah. of expression. Um, I was inadvertently 
quite rude to her when I was leaving to get the, the train and she was arriving back at the, at the flats. And I saw her, it was about lunchtime, and she looked, in my opinion, because she's normally so well put together, she just looked a little bit dishevelled. And I said to her, I said, oh, you've been to the gym, clearly thinking she's done a workout. No, that's just how she was looking that day. And <laughs> I'd really like to apologise to her. Um, she's gorgeous, but... Yeah, I just thought she'd been to the gym. Because also at lunchtime, she'd gone on her lunch break. It was quite quite a warm day. Mm -hmm. um, so I need to uh, stop saying to people or stop assuming that someone has been to the gym. She was also coming from the direction of her gym as well. So that's also what made me think. Have you ever assumed someone's pregnant? No. Oh, good. Thankfully. Have you? Mm, I was there when I was checking into a hotel. Mm. I don't know, it's a long story, but yeah. Well, can I don't we... want to say it because it had, yeah. Because it will be in the papers. No, just it's not very on. funny. Yeah. Okay. So sorry, sorry to Izzy. Um, how how are you? You all right? Good. Yeah. Uh, I got caught in that at the time recording that <gasps> bloody air traffic control. On the, it, apparently, I didn't know as well. The bank holiday weekend, the Monday and the bank holiday, one of the biggest, if not the busiest day for flying. Yes. But I was the one lucky ones. So I got home. Okay. Okay. Malaga Airport ran out of beer. Oh my god! Because you were there. I know. I tweeted it. Yes, I saw BBC News did a BBC story. News. It was a very slow news day. For Daily BBC. Mail, all that. Yeah, they picked wow. it up. Really, yeah, had a great holiday. Also, why am I only just realising this now? Mm. I, really into Aperol spritz. <laughs> what? Okay. Never had one before. I consider it an inferior gin and a bonnet. Oh, no, I think it's better. <gasps> Jen. Well, you're listening to the last ever episode of How I Sexed My Boss. So I've never, never had one before, and I thought, I'm going to have one on holiday. So I said, I'll have Aperol Spritz, and that right. I was what? smashed on them all week. Oh, you've well, got really weekend. northern. What, what's in it? So it's Aperol. And is that like a Campari? Yeah, okay. similar. And then it's Prosecco. Prosecco. We use Carver. Oh. Spanish Carver. Oh, Spanish. You're in Spain. Yeah. yeah. And then soda water. Oh, really? An ice? We ice and a slice of orange. Okay. Oh, I love it. And you put it in a wine glass, you feel dead sophisticated. <laughs> I'm really, really into them. I drunk them all holiday. Just just in time for the summer oh, to be over. I found a new Spanish beer as well. Um, Alhambra. what's it called? Alhambra. Alejandro. Alhambra. <laughs> what's it called? I've said this before, I'll say it again. Spanish beer is the best. Also well, and Spanish coffee, you think, is very good. Uh, yes, I love a Spanish... I love, well, it's when I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move out there, I don't want to get cancelled. Um, this tweet as well from Josh when Barry. To go into hiding from the rush. Loads of people have said this to me. So uh, I said I like Cruz Campo. Apparently it's coming to the UK. Heineken are going to import it, Ben. Oh, really? Josh Barry on Twitter tweeted, would people stop comparing Cruz Campo to Madri? Heineken newly importing an... Andalusian classic is not the same as Carlin. Andalusian? Heineken newly importing an Andalusian classic is not the same as Carlin putting a bearded man on a bottle of piss. Oh, oh right, we've gone there again. Yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> no, I like a Madri. <laughs> hey, I like a Madri. Love a crew, but yeah, I was drinking Alhambra out there. Nice. So you've got Mao, Cruz Campo, Alejandra, and Victoria as well. Okay. I had a Victoria on the weekend. Yeah, it's from Malaga. Yeah. So yeah, um, <laughs> well, just just to, just to sort of go back to our normal tone. My bank holiday, uh, you were stranded at an airport, was spent touring filming locations for keeping up appearances with Jonathan. Oh, okay. Yeah, it right. was a very butch day. When can we hear that episode? Uh, soon. Oh, great! I look yeah, forward to over, that. I don't, I don't actually know when, but in the next couple of weeks. Hopefully. I don't listen weekly. I like to save them up. Bless you. I listen like when I'm when I've got time. It's good for a house clean. Oh, thank you. It puts yes. you very in the mood listening to two camp men <laughs> talking about their favourite sitcom whilst you're running around with marigolds and a feather duster. Nice, yes. Mm, makes me feel butch. Oh, does it? OK, <laughs> wow, OK. <laughs> We're really going some. Um, um, also, um, I took, a few weeks ago, I took Artemis, my goddaughter, yeah. to Kensington Palace to look at the From Crown to Couture uh, exhibition, which is like a fashion Okay. where they're comparing modern dresses that you might see at the Met Gala to stuff that you would see in the 1700s. And actually, sometimes you think, oh, that's a modern dress. And actually, it's not. It's from the 1700s. It's very, very clever. Oh, OK. It's really good. And they've got stuff that Billy Porter's worn and um, Billie you want Eilish. Because you want... No, that's not... No, that's... <laughs> that's Billy Piper. Yeah. 
Because <laughs> no. you want to. Because you, you want to. to. Yeah. Yes. No, Billy Porter is, is a uh, Broadway star and oh. an actor. And anyway, so they've got lots of stuff. Artemis is very opinionated for a four-year-old <laughs> because... Why uh, you love her so much, yes. isn't it? She, she saw one dress and in the middle of a... Yes. Sorry to interrupt. I, I'm all right saying she is your protege. You are. <laughs> she's your she, future protege. Yeah, she's, she's got... A lot of opinions. Okay, carry on, yeah. sorry. Uh, and she's highly intelligent for a... She's four, four and a few months. And um, she... We're walking around uh, the, the exhibition, looking at these dresses, and uh, Artemis shouts out quite loudly, she's got quite a loud voice, which she gets from her father, and she announces to the entire room, well, it's a bit much, looking at one dress. <laughs> uh, the Billie Eilish pink dress, she announced, well, she doesn't look like a princess. <laughs> and then my favourite moment is we're transitioning from one hall to another. You have to go downstairs through what is labelled the servants' corridor, because back when Kensington Palace was a palace, you're down in the basement. And Ellie, Artie's mum, sort of carrying him, goes, oh, look, Artie, servants' corridor. And Artemis just announces, well, why are we in here then? <laughs> Oh, I love her to pieces. Yeah. She's literally your protege, isn't yeah, she? Yeah, she's great. Yeah. I mean, she's like this at four and a half. What on earth is she going to be like when she's 18? I'll show you my nephew at, um, at seven. This is what he was doing to try and get everyone's, um, everyone's attention. Okay. So this is how... Is he an attention seeker? Uh, he's a North. Yes, then yes. Yes, he is. No, um, but this just shows how... Uh, oh, the bloody... I mean, he looks really sweet there. He left Rake. So that's his raccoon, Racky. Racky. But he pronounces it Racky. So I had to run across London to give it Aww. to him before they got on the train. Um, and this is him here. This, I think, sums up. <laughs> Jordan's just showing me his, his... I'll show you, Ben. His nephew, Mooning. Oh, God. He's just Mooning. <laughs> just decided to moon everyone in the garden. OK, that's nice. Isn't that hilarious? <laughs> <laughs> Proper Bart Simpson style. <laughs> anyway, yeah. Well, that's, that's lovely. Um, am I a Karen? Are you a Karen? Am I a bit of a Karen? No, you're a Jordan. Uh, because, no offence to any Karens listening, so I do feel sorry for any Karens, but did you see that video of me at the BAFTAs? What, with your funny hair? Yeah. <laughs> that you reshared from 2019, when so, you hosted the red carpet coverage with Clara Ampho yeah. in 2019, and your hair is slicked. <laughs> To the side. So it was all very new to me then, showbiz. Yeah. And um, this hairstylist came in and, and just started pretty much drying my hair, putting makeup on me. And at the time, I didn't think it looked that bad, but my hair looked bloody awful. And I shared this because BAFTA recently reposted it. And loads of people messaged, sending me like pictures of the Karen hairstyle and stuff like that. Oh, it's a Karen hairstyle, is and it? And it, 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 it came to my attention. A close friend of ours said that... Actually, come to think of it, you are a bit of a Karen. <laughs> and a Karen is someone who complains? Not complain. I don't know. How would you but describe a Karen? It depicts, again, I always feel bad for, like, when you say such a Karen, because I know loads of Karens that aren't actually Karens. Yeah, I know. Um, but, hey, but how would you describe a Karen, Ben? Like, I thought it was someone who complains a lot. Is it not? Yeah. Is it? I do get so. I never comp You're a Karen. I'm not a Karen. Oh my God, you're just a posh Karen. <laughs> I'm you're a, a Karen. <laughs> Karen. You're a Karen. <laughs> you are. I don't complain though. I'm very placid. I've said this before. My you husband potentially is a Karen. <laughs> you got barred from a hotel. Yes, but I that's haven't been the there. Old, exactly. That's the ultimate Karen. You got barred from a hotel before you'd even checked in because of your emails. My God, I've never realised before. You're a Karen. I don't think I am. The UK's leading Karen expert. <laughs> I do get served a lot of their videos on TikTok of people filming them. And I do think with the people that film the Karens, it's like, well, you're just as bad. Like, don't, why are you filming it for uh, just... Oh. We've been invited to that Karen restaurant as well. Have we? Mm. Yeah, Karen Steiner. Also, um, just before... We move on. Mm. Is there a guy called Steve that's messaging you pictures of me outside a brothel in Benidorm? No. Right, good. So this, so you know, after the show, can you just back me up here as well? Because I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm worried he's going to go to papers or something. Right. Well, whatever you do, don't mention it on our podcast. <laughs> well, no, I'm going to own it first of all. Okay. So, um, and I didn't realise, and now come to think of it, yes, it makes sense because there was a high heel chair 
outside. There was a chair shaped like a giant high heel, which I was sitting on. Okay. Um, <laughs> so after our show in uh, Why Not Bar, mm. in... In the place we're not allowed to mention. In Benidorm. Right. Okay. I, I, I'm, I, I nipped out for a cig. I'm, mm. I'm, I've cut down loads, by the way, since Jonathan gave me Alan Carr's book. Oh, are you reading it? Yeah, so have you read it? I need to thank him. So yes, really message him. And it encourages you to smoke whilst you're reading it. Yeah, it does. So, um, I went out for a cig. And whilst I was out for a cig, um, I just went a bit further down, just to have five minutes on my own. And someone came up and asked for a picture. And I, what I remember is they moved me. And then they got a selfie and they had the camera up high. But in the background, it's the name of this, I think, it, I don't know if it's a brothel or a strip club. In Benidorm, but basically it was right next to Why Not Bar. Oh, was it? And okay. he sent me the pictures a few times, and I'm like, Are you trying to blackmail me here or something? <laughs> so can you just back me up that I weren't in a bloody brothel that night? I can absolutely assure everyone Jordan was not in a brothel. We went to... Or a strip club. Or a strip club. Thank you. It's going to be the death of me, these fags. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> We answer to William and Mikey. Thank you. <laughs> Don't. That's a horrible word. It's, I know, but I'm owning it. I'm reclaiming it. Oh, are you reclaiming it. Yeah. it? I meant cigarettes. I know you did. Yeah. God, don't ask for a pack of fags in New York. Jeez, I learned the hard way. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Rumi <Room> Elodie. <laughs> I'll be honest... I had a bit of fruit and yogurt and some pumpkin seeds this morning, okay. but I don't think I had enough because that and bunny has really gone to my head. <laughs> Jesus. Um, you, you've, oh, you want to talk about, before we move on, yes. to um, your etiquette etymology of the week, the mm. certain videos that are doing your head in at yeah, the moment. I mentioned this last Tuesday, but on TikTok, I get served a lot of get ready with me videos. Mm-hmm. And I don't know why, it doesn't often serve me the female videos of Get Ready. It just serves me the male ones. I don't know, I think there's a glitch. And all these people that do Get Ready With Me videos, they, A, they all end up looking the same. And they're only putting a T-shirt and sort of, sort of like grey one-up from athleisure wear on. Baggy pants, baggy trousers. Yeah, grey. And it, they all look the same and train as, get, as if they're putting on... They are dressing for the Met Gala. They're putting on a very generic, plain white T-shirt, often, and grey trousers. And I don't want to get ready with you. Everyone does them, from, like, people that work in business to... Hi, I'm Carnal. Welcome. I'm from West Cork. And get ready with me. I was about to go and do a shift on the farm. <laughs> right. <laughs> No, I don't want to get ready with you. I wouldn't want to get ready with you in real life. Yes, First, I TikTok. put my underlayer on. Then I put on a big jacket. <laughs> then I put on my jeans. And then I put on my wellies. They're quite muddy. You're like, why am I watching this shite? Yeah, yeah. I know. But at least do... with my TikTok videos, on my own personal channel, William Henson Etiquette, God, I... you're everywhere at the moment. I'm doing helpful tips. It's not about me, it's about the advice. It's always about you, William. Pot kettle black. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe because mm. I've never, I've not posted a video on TikTok yet. I'm not even on it. I don't even. No, I'm not even got it's a, a burner account. It's isn't not it? a burner account. <laughs> it's a bit weird. But maybe I should post my first video. which should be a get ready with me one, like a parody. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, an ADHD get ready with me. Where you start to get ready and then you go off and do something else. How do you know? <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> I need to, no, because everyone's like. That's literally, I hate getting ready mm. and I hate going to bed. Right. That's the, getting ready and getting ready for bed. Oh, I hate getting... Oh, I, oh, I know we have a whole routine. Yeah, that's what I hate because now, I, years ago, I just used to get in bed. Sometimes I won't even brush my teeth if I've got to be bothered. Oh. I don't know. Now, like, I've got a facial routine because of you. Do you? Yeah. Use all that stuff you got me yes. years ago. I do Good. that. I was cleansing everything. Now I'm also doing, um, I've got, Rosemary oil for me hair. Rosemary oil yeah. for your hair? And is it cedar oil <laughs> to stop my receding hairline? Right. Again, I've seen some TikTok, I swear by it, so I invested in it. Obviously, so yeah. I rub five drops of that in, with five other drops of somewhere else, and it stinks, makes your oh. pillar stink. And I've got to do my face and my teeth, then clean my braces. Oh, my word. Yeah, I hate getting ready. And what time bed. does this normally start in the evening? 
Honestly, yeah. about half nine, I'm in bed four these days. Yeah. Mm. No, that's fine. We, Do you remember we're... when I used to take the piss out of you? I know. <laughs> I... The thing is, everyone comes around to my way of thinking no. and way of life eventually. You've li- literally manipulated me for the past five years and I'm more... Fin- no, that's harsh. Sorry, <laughs> I didn't mean it like that. Manipulate? Well, you've turned me into you. I used to, honestly, every night when I first met you, I'd at least watch a film on Netflix till about mm. midnight on my laptop on my chest. Yeah. Yeah. Well, anyway. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for giving you a better night's sleep. Gun to your head, worst house chore. I love all of them. <laughs> no, come on, gun to your head, worst house chore. Sweeping the terrace. Is it? Yeah. Gun to your head, go. Putting washing away. Putting washing away? Yeah. Okay. Putting washing away. Oh, I don't like folding the dusters. Do you fold your dusters? Oh, yes. Okay. Gun to have... your head, worst house chore, Ben. You're dead. You're dead. He Cleaning lives in East bathroom. London. They don't do anything. No, they no. don't, though. Cleaning okay. the Cleaning the bathroom. Gun to your head, best house chore. Cleaning the bathroom. Is it? Mm. Wiping my sides down. Oh, nice. I love yeah. wiping my sides down. <gasps> oh, I do I'm like... buffing them. I do like descaling the kettle. Oh, yeah, you took the scale mm. to Benidorm with you, didn't I'm you? I'm obsessed with descaling the kettle. I bought that for you. I know. Ben, ben bought it for... What? Oh, you... vacuuming. Do you like vacuuming? I'm not a big fan of vacuuming. I've bought a robo vacuum cleaner again. I used to have one back in uh, where I, my last flat. The crap. No, well, the technology has come on. Yes, I got rid of mine because I thought it was rubbish. I sold it. But I think actually the new technology is quite good. You sold it? The previous one, yeah, like four years ago. On like Facebook Marketplace or something? Something like that, yeah, or eBay. <laughs> God. But I've got a new one now. The mistake I made last time is I got one that was trying to do two things in one. It was meant to mop the floor and vacuum. And... That's it. Uh, uh, Don't friend. get me on the AI rant. Okay, well, it's not AI. Well, it is because this is putting cleaners out of work. Well, it's not. Well, it is because I. Okay, but our friend. And Mike... I am not. I am not getting on an AI plane because they say that's coming soon. I've only just started getting used to flying. Okay. You have seen I Robot. I know what it's all <laughs> about. Well, our friend Michael got me into having uh, a robo vacuum cleaner again, and so far so good. But I've only got one that does the floors. Okay. So I haven't combined the two. Okay. So that's that. Shall we go to William's Etiquetimology of the Week? And this week, I'm going to talk to you all about the history of the croissant. I love a croissant. Have you seen croissant. those... <laughs> or croissant, as my mum calls it. Yes. Do you, do you want a croissant? Um, have you seen those big giant croissants that everybody's putting on TikTok oh. at the moment? Oh, yeah. They look... Cr- Should we do that one day, Ben? <laughs> one Sunday morning? Yeah. Should we go and get a big croissant? <laughs> I, I, first of all, are you allowed to dip your croissant into your coffee? No. Well, right. we're going to find out the break. Well, we're going to find out the history of the croissant. Croissant? Yeah. And any other questions that Jordan might have? Indeed. Stand by, everyone. Okay, Gene Divas, uh, thanks for sticking with us. Welcome back. And it's now time for William Hansen's Etiquetimology of the Week. Uh, so we're talking about the history of the croissant. And as Jordan said, croissants seem to be very popular on the social media. Uh, indeed, I did a video on, Sorry, how what? on the social media, social media. And I did a video on how to eat a croissant. But let's talk about the history, the origins of them. One of my favourite types of viennoiserie, as they're technically called. Viennoiserie. Viennoiserie. Okay. Say it again. Viennoiserie. Nearly. Um, there are lots of myths concerning the origin of the croissant. Some say they were made in celebration of a victory over an Ottoman invasion of Vienna in 1683, and the the crescent shape was to reflect the um, crescent moon on the Ottoman flag. Is that why we have Vienna twirls or whatever they're called? No, let's let's not get distracted by your Viennese twists. Oh, I love them. Yes, yeah. they're quite nice. Not a bon or a gâteau in years. A gâteau <laughs> or gâteau. Gâteau. We've talked about this. It's chateau, isn't it? I say chateau. Okay. Skipped at chateau. <laughs> Um, others suggest that Marie Antoinette brought them to Paris from her native Austria. Some attest that the uh, pastry was, in fact, uh, created in ancient Assyria. However, it's got nothing to do with that. Guns your head, favourite croissant type of croissant? Right. Cho- chocolate. Oh, OK. Yeah, chocolate croissant. I said cheese and I'm melted. Right. Or we jam and peanut butter. OK, well, they're more modern types okay, of croissant, sorry. but we're just talking about the classic croissant, as it were. Um, there might be a little bit of truth in some of those stories that we've talked about, but really, they all... Um, what we're focusing on is the, the flaky pastry, buttery thing that we eat, not not just sort of a, any type of pastry in a crescent shape. 
That crown goes to a French chap who recorded the first French known. What? You, you really need to stop drinking. I'm just going to read it as I've written it. Can we just say, when G and Divas came to watch us in Benidorm, they could not believe how much William smashed the gin and the bonnet. Because you hardly touch the staff. No, now what? that you're into Aperol spritzes. Oh, just read the bloody thing, come on. So the crown for the croissant as we know it goes to Sylvain Claudius Goy, who recorded the first known French version of the croissant recipe in 1915. So really not that long ago. That's not that long no, ago. I thought it was it's like not. 1700 or something. So instead of the brioche dough, which potentially was used in all those earlier versions that we've talked about, Goy changed the recipe to use the laminated butter dough that we are now familiar with, um, and the flaky delight was then born. So really, croissants, not even, well, just over 100 years old. Does anyone really want a croissant now? Really want one? And of course, I did a th on, on my video on uh, TikTok and Instagram, I said you don't put butter on an all-butter croissant. In, in French etiquette, that's incorrect. Yeah, even I know that. Okay, well, but yes, I know, what but a, lot of, a lot of people don't. You can put um, some confiture, some jam, that's mm. fine, uh, but you wouldn't really put butter on. My mum used to make us, like, cheese and croissant toasties. Did she? So she had, like, a toasty maker, <gasps> but it was, like, a flat one, so it went, like, with the triangles in. And she'd put cheese and ham in them, probably a bit of butter, and then squash them. And it was like a cheese and croissant panini. Nice. Oh, it was good. It was a panino. We've done this many years ago on the podcast, but remember the singular of panini. Panini is plural. Singular is panino. <laughs> no wonder it took us years to get so many listeners. <laughs> that was the content we were doing back then. I think that's fascinating. I shall have a ham and cheese panino. We will be eating some panini. Okay. So paninis. I really want a croissant now. I love a croissant. Uh, now, look, if you want to see Jordan in his element in the place that we're not allowed to mention, uh, us chatting to the place we're not allowed to mention royalty. Benidorm. And me taking on a mechanical bull, you can give our vlog a watch on YouTube. Yeah, it's good. So basically we've put together mm. all the fun and frolics that we got up to in Benidorm. Yeah. So we've put a little 20 minute episode together that you can watch on YouTube. It's, us, it's funny, it's us, really funny. What was the pub called we did the breakfast at? Um, uh, Yorkshire Pride. Yes, during the, the big, lovely, delicious breakfast. William on a Mechanical Bull. Yes. Which I have watched that video about six times. <laughs> in, a, <laughs> in a row. Us performing a very special rendition of It's Raining Men with very odd lyrics. Can I just say, when that starts, it starts like the water is getting low. The version I'm familiar with that most people are familiar with is what, how does it start humid like it just it's completely, a typo no just completely separate lyrics i don't know if that's a rights issue but anyway very odd lyrics but we do a very good drag performance of it's raining man oh okay with yes yeah. you can see us in drag so yeah and interviewing sticky vicky that's available now on youtube just go on youtube and type in help us sex with my boss and you'll see it should we get on to the listeners dilemmas? let's do it uh, this first one is from Justin. A few years ago, I was moving to a flat in London and my parents recommended a very good moving firm. I took their recommendation and three not unappealing lads turned up to move my stuff. All went well and over the day they transferred two loads to my new flat. All fine. <laughs> Don't write your own joke. It's the way you, I know you can't see him, but it's the way he just looked at me as he said two loads. <laughs> Monaco all over again. All fine, and at the end of the day, I paid them and bid them farewell and set about unpacking and making my bed up. About an hour later, my phone rang, and it was one of the lads asking if I enjoyed the service. I said yes, thank you, very good, and promised to give them a good review and put the phone down. A few minutes later, the phone rang again, and he asked a few more questions about the service and then said, are you gay? I was taken aback a bit, but said yes, expecting a bit of homophobia. Instead, he said, so I wondered if you might help me. 30 minutes later, he was naked on my bed, being given a 101 basics to advanced practitioner class and left an hour later, fully a loaded. A 101 basics to advanced practitioner class is how Justin has written it. Get in, Justin. 
Yes, you could probably. Say it was, yes. say it was Justin. <laughs> it was Justin. Justin. Uh, anyway, the dilemma is a gay friend recently asked for a moving recommendation, and I wondered if I hand over the details or if I should share the added extra. Sadly, I didn't get a name of the individual who came back for a class, and it could end up being awkward if they expect something from one of the others. Yours in dilemma, Justin. You didn't even get his name. <laughs> Bloody hell. Come on, Justin. Fair play. Well, he did, by the sounds of yes. it. <laughs> Fair play. Yeah, why not? Recommend Stop it. Stop doing my jokes. What? I don't like it's this. five years of being with you. <laughs> Even Ben does it now. Yes, Ben Ben's does. camp is Christmas these days. <laughs> ben literally says at the end of every sentence, oh, lucky table, Ooh, <laughs> lucky bottle, lucky coffee cup. Funny. Um... um I, you crack on, give him, give him his number, share him, share him with a group. Well, um, yeah, I don't think you need to add on the additional information. I think you should say the firm I used was this, here's their number. Yeah. I don't think you need to say anything more than that. Because technically that could then lead into prostitution. Yes. <laughs> you could get in a lot of trouble. And also what you don't want is, <laughs> let's say your friend has a different set of staff... Uh, or people that come round to, you know, people from the moving company. <laughs> he's giving him the eye. And he starts giving him the eye, and actually they get a black eye. So you don't want that. Yeah. Great letter, though, Justin. Uh, this next one is from Kieran from Sunderland. Hi, lads. I've got a bit of an etiquette question that's caused a debate between me and my wife. Brackets, my wife and I. A friend of ours bought our son some baby Converse, gorgeous, when he was born, and as with most baby clothes and shoes, we didn't get a chance to use them before he outgrew them. They've been in the wardrobe in the original box ever since. Oh. The same friend is now pregnant, and during a recent clear-out, I suggested giving them to her for her new baby, but stipulating that this isn't a gift, we'll be buying other things, but she might as well get use out of them rather than us selling them for a fiver or something. My wife disagrees and says it's not right, but I think it's fine. Any help would be great. Appreciated, Kieran from Sunderland. Kieran, drop us a little DM because I'm after some for my nephew, so I'll take them off you. No, genuine, I'll take them off your hands. I'll pay more than a five. They're well dear. Yeah. They're well expensive. I think they're about 30 odd quid for baby Converse. And then I was like, I could just get the non Converse version that looked like them. They were like six quid. I would I'll sort you out with them, Kieran, no bother. Okay, well, there we go, Kieran. That sorted that out. <laughs> I would say you can't give... I, I get the fact that you're going to say, look, don't accept these as a gift. We're going to get you something else. But actually, by giving it back to to your friend, you're basically going, yeah, we didn't really like or remember it or use it at the time. And I, if I were the friend and someone gave me something that, you know, back, I would potentially <laughs> not think that was very nice. Oh, did I move them up? I'm sorry, I just... Subconscious. Well, that's from really big game on. No, nothing. No, no, no. But if I gave that to someone else because I hadn't used it, you would be offended, for example. Please tell I'd love to see Mikey drinking out of that. Does Mikey drink out of mugs? Yes, he does. Of course he does. He's from bloody Wakefield. Not in the morning. Coffee is in the coffee cups. <sighs> You're so particular but about tea, your coffee. But tea, he will drink in mugs. It's, it's so annoying how particular you are about your coffee. Mm. You, you literally got a 20-minute routine for your coffee. I got a new kettle for my birthday. Oh my God, same. A new gooseneck kettle. What's a gooseneck kettle? It's for doing um, V60 coffee. Come round. I've told you, come round, I'll do your coffee. I, I you have to come in the morning. to sound like a coffee snob, because you know I love my coffee. I can't have instant these days. I used to be able to, but now I'm just like... I've never been able to have instant. Have you not? No. No. I used to, that's all I used to live off. Yeah. I don't mind the little nice instant that's about... The really expensive one, the Americano powdery one, oh, the Nescafe yeah. one. That's Azura, or right. oh, whatever it's called. Yeah. No, it's still oh, awful. Yeah. Is that, I take that no bees with me. That's take outside that broadcasts for those that don't. <laughs> <laughs> so I take that on no bees because sometimes you don't know if you're going to be able, if you're in the middle of a field. When have you been in the middle of a field? Uh, excuse me, did you not see me running around in a tuxedo recently for Samsung? Oh, yes. <laughs> Thank you very much. I, uh, Viral Freddy sent me a message to say he was watching a James Bond film on ITV and uh, in the ad break, you came on with Fleur East and I asked him, was the acting better on the Bond film or on the, uh, on the Samsung advert? What did he reply? I'm not going to... He just laughed. <laughs> <laughs> I was worried about it might be a bit... No, it's lovely. It's, yeah. Hey, it's good. You look good. Uh, but going back to Kieran's letter, um, I don't. I, I agree with your wife, actually, Kieran. You can't give them back. I know you mean well, 
but I, th I potentially think your friend might be a bit insulted. So if you are going to re-gift them, you have to re-gift them to someone completely separate. Or sell them. Like I said, I'll take them off, you know. Or give them to Jordan, yes. Okay. Uh, this one is from Anonymous. Hi, William Jordan, EPB and Diego. Help, my best friend isn't getting the hint. Firstly, you have to understand that my best friend of over 10 years is a big fan of a 90s television show. <laughs> now, I must admit, I do enjoy the show too, but nowhere near as much as him. <laughs> is this... <laughs> You're so... <laughs> the friend recently found out that I haven't seen a certain episode from the series and has since insisted that we have a movie night at his place so we can watch this episode together. When I say insisted, he really has insisted. He can be very persistent. He texted me before a recent holiday and gave me three possible times and dates, <laughs> you're such a twat, to come over. I had been backed into a corner. How do I tell my friend that although I love him dearly, I don't want to watch a special boat-based episode of a 90s sitcom? Thanks. Anonymous. <laughs> if you don't want to watch it, Why? we don't need to. What are you on about? Well, this is clearly from you. No, it's not. We're not allowed to write in. I've written in. Have you? Yeah. When? I was Melissa. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't want to watch it, we'll just hang. I'm ju you have told me before that you... I can feel myself getting very hot, but that's potentially the alcohol. Is that you wanted to watch it? I have no idea what you. Do you think this could be related? This potentially is written by Jordan North about the keeping of appearances, QE2 1994, 1993 Christmas special episode. Right, so you think that because we're watching. So you thought, oh, that is quite similar to our situation, isn't it? <laughs> yes, the only modification is just to make it easier for you, I'm coming to yours and Ben's coming too. Yeah, it's not now, bloody Ben's coming as well. No offense, you're more than welcome to. Actually. You said in the text last night. You went, shall we invite Ben? Yeah. I said no, but you overruled me, and Ben right. is being invited. This is not, this, can we, we need to help this anonymous out. So William thinks this is me writing in because... Okay, well, what would you do, Jordan? He recently found out that I haven't seen the QE2 episode of Keeping Up Appearances. On this very podcast, months ago, I think. Okay, you think this letter's sent in from me? Yes. I'm, um, well, it's not. Okay, I'm so what's your advice for Anonymous as to how to get the friend to, to get the hint? Uh, my advice is sometimes you've just got to suck it up and... <laughs> <laughs> Stick that on a T-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> and I think you should be a good friend and humour your friend and go and watch this said episode. And actually, you might enjoy it more. What uh, streaming service is it on? iPlayer. Is it on? Yeah. Oh, okay. Right, I've got <coughs> I've got that. Yes, most people do. Right, so I'd say just invite your friend around, suck it up, and, and watch the episode. And humor then put them. the episode on. Humour them. That's what I'd say. What would your advice be? I think that's excellent. Sometimes you've got to push your boundaries. If I'm drinking from a mug, if you know, for example, just let's just take us as an example. Mm -hmm. I'm now going to be drinking from a mug in the mornings. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm doing something that my friend you in this instance wants me to do so anonymous should do something that their friend wants them to do for 50 minutes okay fine just right. a suggestion um it'll have to be quite late so i don't get into work till about seven that's fine should we order some yeah yeah that's what should i said get, yesterday should we get a curry or do you want to get pizzas ben was also saying could you bring diego of course you can i'll see you there jolt <laughs> i'll be there let's get some pedigree does he have pedigree no. i can't have curry What's wrong with pedigree? Nothing. He's it's eating shit, He's it's eating crap. It runs through me. I like pedigree, but pedigree don't like me. Do you know what I mean? It's got a cockney. Well, thanks for that, Anonymous. I'll add some curry. I'll have a ruby, Joel. We'll have a ruby. We'll have a ruby. Don't bother with pizza. Can't get through the crust. This next one is from B. Uh, Dear William and Jordan, I was out to dinner last night and ordered a bottle of my favourite affordable white wine. This restaurant has a reputation for its excellent wine list and all the staff are very knowledgeable on the wines and appropriate glassware, etc. When the waiter came to serve the wine, he poured the standard small bit into my glass, which, as William has pointed out in the past, is to see if the wine is corked. Except this was a twist cap bottle. I always pause when this happens, then smell and drink the wine, smile and nod. But am I doing something wrong? I know I shouldn't care, but I feel the judgment of, as David Mitchell puts it, the incredibly posh people who are still unaccountably waiters. Would it be a faux pas to say, no, it's fine, just pour the glass, please. Thanks very much for your help. Much love, B. I, I did this recently hmm. in Ibiza. They poured the glass and I was like, yeah, that's fine. And, and they just poured a tiny bit yeah, in the glass. Yeah, and that's fine. And then yeah. we shared the table with about six other people. 
they all took a sip and like literally spat it out and it tasted like vinegar and I was like, oh, just thought that was. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, there's me trying to be all sophisticated. Was it a screw top or a cork? It was a cork, it was a Rioja. And uh, I was nice. like, yeah, that's fine, thank you. Carried on chatting. So I was like, yeah, 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 hopefully we'll be able to stay up for the rest of the season, but you never know how it is. And then this girl was just like, <clears throat> and then a few other people around the table were like, oh my God, and I was like, oh. Yeah, it, look, if it's a cork, I would always try it. But if it's screw top, I normally say before they even pour that little bit, I say, I'm sure it's delicious. However, can, can screw top not taste funny? I'm sure you can, it can. There can be there can be problems with screw ben, top. Ben, your dad's a wine expert. I think he'd say to smell it and taste yeah. it still. But so, so when I did Ben's that, Ben's dad's uh, a very well known wine importer. <laughs> yes, he is. And if Ben who tries to be a working class, if that doesn't say a middle class, my dad would. <laughs> Um, I would say... <laughs> Just because you vote Labour. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, carry on. So when I did my video on uh, wine etiquette a few months ago and I said you just sniff the wine and you don't need to taste it, oh my God, the reaction that got really? from people. Obviously people expecting a short 30 second TikTok video to contain absolutely every single point and nuance of etiquette in it. Um, which it doesn't. There are some instances where you can taste the wine if you desperately want to. And I think etiquette is beginning to change. But technically, traditionally, you were just sniffing it to see it hadn't corked. Do you know what freaks me out? Or mm. if we've been down with the kids, gives me the ick. Yes. You know, when you get, you're at a restaurant and they put your plate down, people pick up the plate and go, <sighs> and sniff it. Who sniffs the plate? Like they sniff the food or they put the nose so in the, and they So go, the diner? Yeah. Not the waiter. No, but that would be... So, awful. like, they'll put it down. Sometimes they'll always pick it up. Or they'll put it down and they'll go... Who the dickens is that? A few people. And I'm like, why are you sniffing your plate, you fucking weirdo? Yeah, that is weird. <laughs> Have you seen it before? People go... <sighs> no, well, I'd smack them. Would you? Yeah. That made me quite violent. Favourite smell of food? Gun to your head, go. Coffee. Oh, it's good food. Uh, or truffle. Truffle. Mm, obsessed with truffle. I like it. I like truffle. Yeah. Truffle. 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 Mm. Mm. Do we have time for one more or is that enough? Ready, Breck. Thanks for asking. Let's do oh, one so... more. Okay. It's quite a long one. It's from Anonymous. We'll get through it. Oh, it's been quite a long episode, actually. Go on, we'll do this one. Dear William, Jordan and Ben, I wonder if you could help me with some advice. The exact situation I shall proceed to lay out for you is perhaps unlikely to occur in quite the same way again, but I'd like to feel ready to do the right thing if somehow it does. I had ordered a piano to be delivered to my flat and I was working from home for the day so I could be there to let the delivery people in. The buzzer duly went and I went downstairs to let the van into the communal car park. As I ushered the van through the big mechanical gate, I caught a glimpse of the driver and realised he looked incredibly familiar. Oh, God, is it the same removal man? You're getting around this guy, <laughs> aren't you? However, I couldn't for the life Shagging replace Shagging his way him. around the UK, this lad. I made my way back up to the flat to wait for them to bring this incredibly heavy piano up to its new home. As I walked, I racked my brains trying to work out where I had seen him before. Then it hit me. I realised where I'd seen him. Not missing a beat, I gleefully texted my friend, OMG, piano delivery guy is totally off of porn. Except as I pressed send, <laughs> oh wow, I realised with dawning horror that I had not sent the text to my friend, but I had sent that gleeful text to the delivery driver. No way! <laughs> After a minute of frantic Googling, I confirmed that there was absolutely no way to recall an iMessage once it had sent. That's not strictly true. So I panicked. The man had my lovely 1950s Yamaha, and it was on the grounds. How would he respond? He was quite an intimidatingly muscular man. I mean, he literally carries pianos for a living. As I ruminated and paced, there was a knock at the door and it was the delivery guy and his colleague with my piano. The delivery was all very seamless. They were so professional and I thanked them and sent them on their way. Now my question is, what is the best way of salvaging this situation? What is the best etiquette? My approach at the time was this text exchange. Ah, oh, sorry, that text clearly wasn't meant for you. It's just you look really familiar. Thanks for the delivery. He replied, no worries. Depending on what you've seen, then maybe you have seen me. Wink. <laughs> that was where we left it. Oh, that's fine. That's great. The level of excitement I felt was considerable when I realised uh, that the man delivering my piano was the same gentleman I'd seen only days before in hard spanking after swim class. 
Nevertheless, I'm curious as to your thoughts on whether or not I could have handled it better. Thank you, Anonymous. I think you nailed it. <laughs> I would say... I think you nailed it. Anonymous. You sent a little winky face, it's fine. Depending on which iOS you're running, you can actually delete messages. Oh, okay. Or you can edit messages as well. Oh. Um, you have to do it within a certain time frame, but probably update your iOS. Was anyone else hoping there'd be a bit more there? <laughs> well, I thought they were going to have it out on the piano or something. But Jordan's definitely going to go and Google hard spanking after swim class, aren't you? <laughs> Absolutely not. Do it now. <laughs> How quickly he complied! What's it called? Hard spanking. Oh, I better put air, air. Put private browsing on. That's the one. Hard spanking after swim class. Hard. Ben's doing it as well, you pervert. Banking. After. After school. Swim class. Swim class. There's quite a few options. <laughs> it's definitely not Amy. Couldn't lift the piano with them arms. <laughs> oh God! This. Oh God! This is. I've gone down a boarding school spanking. Yeah. Well, that's not the video. <laughs> oh God! That's you. No. Excuse me. Do you uh, get spanked in boarding school? No. Are you allowed to? No, good. Well, was, I'm not that old. They've outlawed that, like, in the 50s. You weirdo. Anyway, Anonymous, send us the video. Right, well, thank you for all of that. What's coming up on the weekend release, Jordan? Uh, we've got Airbnb hosting stories coming up from oh, our listeners. Oh, nice. Lovely, OK. Remember, you can listen every Tuesday and Friday. You can watch us on YouTube on Wednesday and Sundays. And you can share us on your socials all week. You can send your sales of trepidation to your help. Your sales? You can send your shales. You can send your tales of trepidation to help at sexandmyboss.com. Or you can tweet us or send us a message on Instagram or TikTok. We're at sexandmyboss. Or you can write to me. And in the fullness of time, I will promise you a handwritten reply on one of our luxury greetings cards with executive self seal envelopes. The address, where is that, Jordan? It's on the website. Sexandmyboss.com. See you on Friday. Friday. Bye. Bye.